This is a lecture creating the educational developments of atoms, time, motion, and the need to understand those who intend to ignite atomic fire here on Earth have built weapons to do so. I read for brevity, that's all. Threatened our world includes you. They threaten our entire world, and that does include you. Or, or simply put, they must be stopped or our entire world can die. As they proclaim knowledge, this work is about their fantasies instead being revealed. Foundations and understanding require knowledge. The first university is wrong video I provided. To the masses, I identified the simplest possible elements of knowledge to suggest you better pay attention to this. The ignition of an atomic fire on Earth is no game. Chances are an atomic fire cannot be extinguished. Once ignited, since the fuel source is an atom, our planet will become a sun. There is no doing it over, no second chances, no changing your mind. Once ignited, that fire either extinguishes itself, as proclaimed by the university expert, not enough gravity here, or it burns this entire planet, because a 10 million degree fire controls itself. This educational version is now for the individual who believes he or she can understand more significant details. I now elevate that construction of a true and complete threat to our world by applying a more dedicated understanding of the knowledge that is available by truth, rather than the fantasy as is university knows. They are in a reality of leadership by spoiled children. They are the most uneducated people about life and living who have ever existed. Or they are just plain terrorists, fronting a fraud, lying to buy time so they can complete the the destruction of life itself. You have your chance to choose which is true. Yours then becomes a critical decision because although I can be wrong, even if I am not, your universities cannot be wrong by gambling. Their decision is to destroy our entire planet if they are wrong. They will turn it into a sun even if they are the tiniest bit wrong. Within that foundation is root, there are no instruments of any kind or any other method by which a human being can peer within the sun or its fire. Therefore, all concerned, this understanding is entirely dependent upon thought. While, as you will learn, their understanding is entirely fake, or simply fantasies. Understanding the sun is irrelevant to the facts of life on earth. However, that truth is declared bankrupt and without foundation due to the extreme energy experiments caused and built by a university mind. Those in leadership who have declared it is their right, backed up by the courts, policing agencies, and media, to literally let them gamble with every living thing on earth and all that could or would come without our future being destroyed. This is not a game. The sun and its fire is not a toy wrong by even a little bit is a dead world, even a dead solar system, as another sun would destroy it. No small thing. So the cost of your not being fully and honestly involved in this, your choice, you choose not, is you choose not to care. You say an atomic fire cannot be sustained here, or more simply, our university gods cannot be wrong. They can't even be questioned. He, as, as your leaders say. Even though they declare we will ignite this fire and have created many machines and extreme energy to do so, you still believe them, don't you? They will ignite that fire unless stopped. So we question, because they are not gods, the first order of business is discussing why extreme energy experimentation is literally life or death for our world. Established that the fire on our sun is described by the universities as fusion, which they say is simply two hydrogen atoms being forced to combine into one helium atom. They say it is the, the change in energy that is what they see. According to them, every BTU is the result of a force used to make the helium atom from hydrogen, which then, by extrapolation, means there must be helium everywhere. The sun is making helium. It must be everywhere. The energy clearly coming from the sun makes this fantasy. Totally absurd and already proven wrong by Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in San Francisco. Only one of several extreme experiments being done. Over three years of trying at the National Ignition Facility, Lawrence Livermore, 
To ignite that fire with a small amount of hydrogen using 180 million degrees and a half trillion pounds per square inch of pressure in their laboratory, their failure proves fusion does not work. They gave up, but refused to stop, instead expanding their efforts and intensifying their methods, which does include igniting a small amount of weapons-grade plutonium. It was an absurd theory, as merely combining atoms does not release the energy found on the sun. No experimentation is necessary to know that is certain, nor can atoms be combined by or built by pressure and heat. That is just another fantasy. The second definition of failure does recognize that when combining two atoms of hydrogen to make helium, as is said by the university expert, to be what produces all the heat that comes from the sun, then there must be massive amounts of helium produced. That is technically what the university states. But helium is one of the scarcest elements in this universe, where an unknown number of suns exist. That would be impossible to expect. A fact that proves the assumption of fusion, which is making helium, is wrong. Even without experimentation, it's first grade math. Or one plus one hydrogen is not equaling two as in helium. Fusion is dead, it does not exist, it is a fantasy destroyed, even by themselves at Lawrence Livermore. Even a first grader, a six-year-old, understands why not. It's just math. One plus one hydrogen does not make helium, or the helium would be somewhere. The next foundation of university knows is that the sun is made entirely of hydrogen. This is the lightest element known, which universities have proclaimed this has produced the most dense object in our solar system, as is called our sun. That is functionally impossible. It is pure fantasy. The lightest element known does not produce the densest mass possible. How is that not so? The next foundation of university knows is they insist that the fire and pressure coming from the sun originates at its core, or the core is hottest inside at the core inside the sun itself, which means all the fuel of our sun is on fire simultaneously. When all the fuel is on fire, the fire goes out when the fuel is gone. How can you doubt that? With all the fuel burning at once, no fire lasts for any extreme amount of time, proving again this is pure fantasy. Obvious and proven true by your own relationships with fire itself, you know it is so. Fire is controlled chaos on earth. It exists by burning the molecular bonds of chemical elements combined, or more clearly, fire reduces complex forms to its more simple state. Alternately, sun fire is chaos uncontrolled, which, does, which means it does not end until all the order is driven out, leaving essentially nothing behind. The fire defined, and clearly true, that does prove that does exist on our sun is the burning of atomic bonds. We know it's atomic, as nothing else can produce the heat or sustain itself over time. We also know it is not controlled explosions, but actual fire. Fire at its essence is still fire. The only difference between Earth and Sun is what controls the chaos, a secondary element on Earth, or doesn't, only atoms matter on the Sun. The next foundation of the university knows is their assertion that solar gravity exists because some miracle tangent tangent, not even a clue, they don't even have a clue, which ties the planets to our sun. The next foundation of university knows is their assertion that solar gravity exists because of some miracle tangent, not even got a clue, which ties the planets to our sun, like a cord which disappears into their intensely hot fantasy fire quarry within that sun. They have not a clue as to what that miracle tangent is, nor how it gets to the planet, Know what happens to it in their core, it just gets sucked in. No, nor any explanation of why or what the term, terminal, thermal expansion by physical law is discarded. That would be the pressures radiating out from such a core as they're at their predicted extreme heat. Instead of obeying thermal dynamic laws, university experts insist that instead of outward pressures as is caused by heat expansion, they can turn that law around and demand this fire, this core, has all the heat and pressures going inward. And then it just disappears into another dimension. Fantasy is everywhere. Fires don't do that. Physical laws are discarded. 
They have no basis in fact at all. A fire at the core is complete fiction. It can't exist. We know that because of several laws that they insist on breaking. So let's look at what they can prove. There is a spectrograph, chemical identification, picture of the sun which proves as best we can that small amounts of hydrogen are coming from the sun itself. That is the limit of their proof of anything. No sensor, nothing can look beneath the fire. This is their only simple true fact. Thought recognizes that the fuel being burned is energy being released is an atomic bond removed. This is reducing the composition of atoms by destroying what holds an atom together, thereby releasing its component parts, which are also then burned. The smallest components possible that could escape such a fire are its tiniest atoms, as in hydrogen, or the ash cloud, caused by and from an atomic fire it would be composed primarily of hydrogen because it is the smallest possible thing that could escape. Hydrogen is the most common recognizable element in the universe we know of. As every sun produces it, this reality fits the facts, demonstrating that hydrogen is not the fuel of the sun, or even its composition, but what is left over from the fire. Everything else, as in all other elements, orderly atoms are burned and they don't escape. Thought recognizes that thermal expansion requires room for the heat. It's a physical law we know of and can prove. Therefrom, the size of the sun fire does not represent the size of the internal sun itself, but merely the expansion required for an atomic fire to exist. We add in that when an entire sphere is on fire, the expansion is greater because now fire pushes against fire itself, thereby lifting the flame much higher off the fuel. The reality of that conceives of a large, massive, planet-sized object beneath the flames as the primary fuel source. So let's again discuss the fire itself. First, we must recognize by thought, in order for an atom to contain the requisite amount of energy that the sun proves is being released, or an atomic bomb proves here on Earth is energy available, reality states if that much energy is contained inside, then something must be holding that energy inside. In fact, it must be stronger than the energy pushing it out. If the energy is not being held in place, then it simply disappears into space. Consequently, thought knows this does in fact occur. The conceived atomic structure is a proton mass that ena en enables energy flow outward. A neutron antimass, which is the opposite holding energy of the atomic environment, or a dark energy or dark mass, and electrons which consist of what happens. Their minor initial fragmentation occurs when the two opposing energies collide to create an element. The environment of an individual atom is then constructed and held together by opposites attract. To burn the environmental order that holds an atom together as with fire is not open to discussion. However, the release of both the outward positive positive in proton energy and the inward negative energy that is the neutron requires opening the environment. Your universities attempt this every day. The electrons add only incremental energy to this fire. Nonetheless, burning the energy of fire <laughs> is the slow release of an environmental lock, whereas explosive energy is the fast accelerated release of the environmental locks. Not the same. The positive energy is recognized as the heat we feel from the sun. The negative energy or neutron being opposite of that energy, as is known by its contribution to holding the environment of an atom together, essentially falls into the core of the sun as an opposite but nearly equal reaction. It's a law. For every action, there will be an equal opposite reaction. It is the release of that negative energy which forms the bond called solar gravity between sun and planet. Therefore, the fire itself causes solar gravity, which means what we call gravity here is absolutely irrelevant to the fire. University wrong is a dead earth. University wrong is a dead earth. We know this opposite energy exists because we know as an example, if you swing a weight on a rope, you must hold the rope with equal force against the force of the weight where it releases energy to go wherever the force takes it. Negative energy exists as an atom or an atom does not. 
because we know it contains energy. It contains it. A magnet is an alternate force described by electron motions. About the same. So let's consider every environment as is an atom. It is an, at it is an environment because it has discipline. Discipline means this resists change because order controls it. That discipline keeps the atom extremely stable. But it is worth noting discipline does mean order exists, while order itself means the essence of an intelligence may arise or has risen, another topic entirely. Regardless, thought constructs the fire known as our sun in this way. A 10 million degree flame, expanding because of thermal dynamic laws, rises above the fuel source, much like a candle flame rises above the wax. Heat requires it. It's a physical law we know exists, so the fire does not exist on the surface of the mass underneath. Rather, the extreme outward energy release suctions up the atomic elements, the mass from below, to feed the fire as its fuel source. A solar flare is the sudden release of a greater than normal amount of material from the surface, which then goes into the fire. A solar flare is like adding fuel to the flame. A solar tornado is an extremely dense or stubborn area on the surface of that mass which refuses to be suctioned up. The tornado actually downdrafts more heat into that area which then causes the mass to be released. The sun remains relatively spherical because the fire proves that is so by its curvature. If the mass was not spherical, the fire would reveal that as well in deformities. Deformity would mean the environment would, not, would then not be stable. This was the first step in a supernova event. Longevity proves stability, and that stability proves the mass itself is relatively cool, all things considered. To construct that elementally, we consider the ultimate opposite of hot energy in a proton as cold energy in a neutron. So releasing the outward heat or extreme activity of the proton itself must also release the inward or core cold what has little or no movement from the in neutron. The net effect is to keep the sun mass stable by opposing forces contained in separate environments with only the outer surface of the mass interacting with the heat energy released. Both then stable as is proven by its own longevity. Thought then contributes a supernova exploding star is as its fundamental truth created when the sun mass fails to remain stable or more simply when the mass itself overheats. More fuel is then released into the flames. The flames then grow in size because fire has more fuel. This causes the sun mass to release even more atoms into the fire and it grows. When, that, when the balance that has held the sun in check throughout its existence is overweighted, the outer girth of the mass begins to explode. That in turn forces shockwaves into the core of the sun mass, which then also explodes, causing the supernova blast to exist. But there are three variables present within an exploding star. Explosive forces going outward. The physical law. For every action there will be an equal opposite reaction, which pushes energy inward. And the fundamental, if an energy pushing out cannot e exit the environment within which it has exploded, then it must turn itself backward or inside out to become an anti or opposite directed energy, which in turn creates the potential for a black hole. Before we go further, we, we go back to minimally examine the core of an atom itself. Identified within this exploding new supernova star are the impacts of extreme energy, some of which will not escape fast enough so they turn around. Because outward pressure is also forcing a reaction after that reversal. A sphere that destroys itself in the same instant on all sides creates a core that has been forced into a tapering or smaller and smaller hole that was previously its center mass. Black holes exist when the explosive event is uniform enough to accomplish this feat, or more simply an outward pressure wave as an inward pressure wave as well, forcing equally from all sides due to its spherical shape, which then becomes a reaction that must push against itself. The spherical shape constructs the black hole because the force from all sides is directed upon the center. As to the atom itself, we begin the journey wherein thought takes us back in time. By understanding something physical did exist before time, or there would be nothing. Time is motion. So we ask, if energy exists and accumulates where there is no heat or no motion, 
whenever a physical reality of existence touches something similar, what happens? The question is, do these two things attract, repel, or do nothing? Mass has an environmental existence. It takes up space. Energy has a physical existence, even though it does not technically take up space. Where there is mass, there is time. Where there is only energy, time is irrelevant, which constructing eternity. So then, before time existed, there was energy, but no mass. The addition of mass is illustrated by the layering of energy. Where beyond extreme cold exists, if there are dimensional layers governing energy, then different intensities of that energy. Then when they touch, surfaces which unite can seal. Two different levels of energy contained within the same environment due to that sealing effect can then erupt in competition with each other. If the seal holds, the effect of mass has been born. A physical, three-dimensional environment now exists. One method of seeing how this core of the atom becomes a greater surface than itself is, is by frying frozen tater tots in oil. Immediately after throwing tater tots in hot grease, they clump together and must be forced apart. Mass grows in the same way. This is how planets arose as well. Cold adheres things together by shrinking the parts into each other. This is, after all, the opposite of heat which pushes things apart. Hot oil pushes cold tater tots together. Because the cold creates an area of less motion, therefore less resistance. Before there was mass, there was energy. Mass is energy contained by physical forces. To attain mass, energy must create its own environment. To do that, it must exist in a three-dimensional state. To achieve that dimension, an environment must inflate to raise one layer above another while sealing the environment all around. This is individual expansion. Or the amount of confined area that can be sustained without exploding the hole and releasing the energy. What is extremely cold can have its surface erupt, leading to expansion. So the critical question is, what type of surface does an energy, something which behaves without or in conjunction with mass, have? The answer is most easily understood by constructing layers. Each layer is then a potential environmental component of energy expanded. It may be conceived of as when two energy layers meet, the boundary effect hardens into a physical form. Mass exists because that layer, or primordial something, hardens, or when each layer is put under pressure by an eruption within the energy capture by creating a seal between the layers the thickness of the skin determines the mass. Or in other terms, a disciplined energy packet now creates the mass which then forms a proton. Energy in motion itself is a release from that energy packet to become an independent force. Or more simply, mass it is motion or a force released. In a supernova, the initial atomic explosion, extreme acceleration, pushes the proton and neutron both outward and inward. With such force, it deforms the surface of the proton mass by stretching it into an umbrella shape. Because of the mass of a planet-sized object is great, extreme amounts of proton release are all growing by forces stretching it. The resultant outward action uses the stretch to intensify its force, while inward reactions to that explosion creates a division or a boundary. When the second explosion meets this force boundary, in the middle to resolve the conflict with its aggressive new forced energy. This balance point becomes, or between the first and the second explosions, softens the proton mass by compression, making it into a pancake shape. Greater deflection of the energy beneath then arises as the boundary mass helps to seal the environment. It's like uh, packaging the second explosion into a casing. Since the heat rise begins on the outer surface of the sun mass, the initial explosive event begins there. The resultant theory is that a singular outer explosive event constructs an inner pulse of energy which then will then ignite a second inner explosive event. This multiplying the effect of the first by the effect of a contained energy beneath the pancake layer. The second explosion then duplicates the first umbrella effect in the more dense second environment, pushing the reaction of the second explosion into a more contained direction. This energy cannot resist the pressures created, which will then mean to invert the umbrella effect on the proton mass, much like turning a common umbrella into the wind or away from the wind. 
That effect removes all energy associated with the layers expanded by energy, breaking its seal. This reversed energy becomes, at its essence, same as the primordial universe, where layer upon layer, without energy expansion, is energy in a different dimensional state. This pushes out all heat as well to become an anti-mass, or anti-energy or dark energy, or opposite force reality. The amount of layering created in this center star core environment determines the stability of a black hole formed. Because it begins in a spherical explosion, all forces meet in the middle, which by its nature will then consist of a tiny path between the boundaries opposing each other. Frequency movements caused by the addition of more anti-mass keeps this path open. Black hole means condensed energy without motion, there is no space other than the middle path. A state of reality which multiplies the cold, since nothing can get in other than the central path which is too small to convect. Nothing changes, that means that the outer boundary layer of this black hole when opposing forces are introduced, convection, which is movement through heat, will occur only in one direction. Since this heat energy can escape only through the middle path at the center of the black hole, it enters the path, is inverted by extreme compression, and is accelerated to, through the hole to ex exit as dark energy, or as opposite energy of heat and its, its heat motion. More simply, this string of neutron anti-mass, or anti-energy, more simply, this uh, is blasted into space where it is eventually encounters a proton mass, that which is ejected from in a supernova event that is blasted to a point of an extremely small uh, proton or neutron join at that point when they meet. This new mass presents from a collision, which means particles or electrons will be broken off because opposites attract and when they hit each other there will be a small uh, explosion. These electrons then form a boundary, making the environment of an atom. Atoms exist in different sized regions because different sized mass must encounter similar sized anti-mass. That creates different physical effects. Radiation exists because there is more energy in the proton, which means only sufficient dark energy in the neutron. These are not as stable as, as in a more balanced state where the neutron is clearly sufficient to hold the energy in place. That describes most elements. It is noteworthy to include planetary gravity is produced by the exchange path of electrons losing their initial orbit. Environments conceive of time because they can be measured. Pressure waves exist because the boundary resistance has been overcome, releasing the pressure. Therefore, something which conceives of a boundary must also exist first. Proof something existed before time is then true. A pressure wave means something is being pushed by or as with energy. Whatever is pushed is then considered an unidentified object. Definable laws which declare an object being pushed leaves a trail constructs the potential that the opening in space and time conceived by a trail can also then pull something else. What is being pulled does not leave a trail, only a shadow of such, because the energy is on the opposite side. Shadow measures the distance between what has been and what has been left behind. Life is a force that pushes the boundary of our existence. We are then pulled behind that force along a trail that then defines our existence. The path between humanity and life is distinctly straight. The alternative path, that is a deviation from life and its truth, as is created by human decisions, alters experiences and expressions accordingly. From life, which is disciplined, balanced, structural order, in it becomes chaos when you when when you make different changes, which then equals death, because chaos is the end of all things complex, or more simply, the burning of bonds, which you deviate from the true path of life. That represents all things become harder, as you must push and choose for yourself. No path exists for you to follow unless you make that kind of a choice to life itself and truth. The result is by your own decisions. This has become your truth instead of life. Eternity means only what is true can survive here. This work is given not because it is important. Such knowledge as this is completely unimportant for the most part. It is simply interesting to some. Life is important. A reality the university knows has proven they don't care about. 
The cult of university worship must then be confronted in the hope you might just understand they can be wrong. Therefore, they're not God, as you assume. It is just the fantasy of your mind. Media, courts, leaders, etc. all continue to insist that they tell you everything that matters, consistently leaving out everything that actually does matter. They know these things, uh, these threats exist, I told them. Stop the universities from completing their chaos on earth or this whole world will be abandoned, whether by a slight mercy which is to let the planet itself burn, ending your whole planet existence quickly, or by the other measures which are so clearly coming, as in Armageddon, which means nature is in chaos, it can't survive itself, life, discipline, structure, balance, thought, and order are all collapsing into chaos, that is coming, the university mutilates everything. Or in every hand there is a gun, a fire, a bomb, etc., which would be called the apocalypse, or it means murder everywhere, or blood everywhere. Examples already exist of um, hell, which means humanity has gone insane because their future no longer exists. All our food is gone. The overpopulation proves that's coming. Water is gone. Same thing. Leaving cannibalism is next. And so on and so on. Reality states you cannot remain as you are. A majority have always wanted or believed they could play God. Well, now you must with your own future. We have, we have defeated nature in many ways. If it doesn't take care of us, how will you survive? By human decisions you will reap your reward because by human decisions you are threatened as an entire world, every single one of us. Therefore, life or death on this earth is your decision now. You do get to play God with our own lives because that is where the university diploma or its leadership has led you to be. Make your decision because there is no going back. We can't just you know, wave a magic wand and say the earth is just the way it was a hundred years ago. It's not going to happen. Playtime is over. Your decision is only by truth life survives. Or, alternately, continue worshiping the university, which equals death by chaos will come true. Evolution, which is the worship of death, because chaos is death. When chaos means everything complex is gone, and life is complex. If you fail to make the right choice, all the tragedy will come true. All of your leaders have chosen that only they get to decide if they can gamble with the entire planet, or mutilate all its nature or anything else. Only they can choose to gamble or deny you the right to have a say. You have no say. The courts say you have no legal rights. You cannot understand what they're doing is great. So they make the decision for you. So they alone have the right to make this decision and gamble with our whole world and all its nature and everything else. That is a decision they made. They assume, just like the atomic bomb, we can control it. Well, that didn't turn out so well either, but unfortunately for us all, an explosion is different than a fire. Extreme arrogance refuses to acknowledge that, and every other fact in this suddenly is, uh, it looks like Satan on earth. Uh, religious or not, it does fit the description of what is being done. Simple and plain, like it or not, is irrelevant. If they uh, ignite an atomic fire, which they say they will, the fire itself is going to decide life or death for us all. It's not a game. There's no going back. If, fuel, if an atom is fuel, which was what an atomic fire means, atoms are fuel, then, then atoms, you know, the whole, the whole planet is fuel. How can you light a fire in the middle of all fuel? and expect it to go out. You will not go out. There's no going back. You should bear in mind that without chaos, people don't need leaders. That's a fact of life. Without violence, people don't need the military. Without media, people cannot be whipped into a frenzy and as a consequence, attack others will attack the police, as has been done. 
Instead, it is possible to let the law decide when there is truth and justice in the courts. So then you can ask yourself, what is true? Who is leading you where? I'm not leading you. I'm telling you the evidence that exists. We are in trouble. We are in danger. People will say, or people have always said, this world cannot die. People say religious prophecies, as is the world ending in fire, cannot come true. The university says Noah's flood did not exist. However, the evidence says, even without energy experience, ex experiments to ignite atomic fire, our current population growth of roughly 100 million more mouths to feed each year will cause every religious prophecy to come true. We are not going to survive that, plain and simple. The prophecy of our ending as a world on fire is by the evidence of extreme energy experimentation in many ways along with the determination to ignite an atomic fire, clearly proves this can, in fact, now happen. Couldn't in the past, but the machines now exist. They are operating, and there are people who try every day to ignite an atomic fire. Noah's flood is proven true by the clear evidence of fossil fuels. In order for that fuel to, have it, to exist in coal, oil, and gas, enormous amounts of life had to die together and then be grouped together and then be buried together tightly, some of which is in the ocean or buried under thousands of feet of soil. To form these plants and creatures were then compressed by their soil on top. That reality also had to keep the mud out so it was washed. That's kind of what a flood does. It washes the dirt off. There is also one method to have accomplished. There is only one method to have accomplished all these realities, and that is a worldwide flood. What it proves, however, is that a tremendous amount of life was lost at one time in those few brief moments of time. In other words, the world and all its life, uh, other than perhaps plants, just plain almost died. Another facet of a constructed reality to consider is astronomy says there is at least one binary sun system that they know of. This is an out of order event in the physical universe and will end with destruction. It is impossible for a sun to enter a new solar system without chaos. It would bring destruction to both systems. Therefore, it is far more likely that a planet already in place was ignited. Same scenario as here, which means the revolving sun was most likely a planet which used to be inhabited with people like us. Arrogance and blind faith are not unique. They can happen anywhere. Over the decades, the one thing that has been made perfectly clear is you want, only want, what you want and nothing else regardless of the consequences. You don't care. Today, however, none want to believe that universities are in fact threatening extermination of this planet and all its life, including you. You just don't want to believe it. However, the evidence is absolute. The universities are trying to ignite an atomic fire on this planet. That means life or death for us all. In one single ignition, the fire decides. It is a certainty. Once ignited, the fire decides. Even much more is, is even much more than that. The universe is also mutilating all of nature and the environment is being threatened, the water, everything. Yet all the people say, that just can't be so. The media would tell us if we were in danger. Or more distinctly, what they mean is the universities are our gods. And then all the people say, I will wait and see if it happens. Yet it is impossible for any human being to be that completely stupid and such an extreme fool as that. Because there is no going back from ignition. There is no going back. It is life or death for our planet. You can't put it out. It's a 10 million degree fire burning atoms. It won't go out. So the fire decides. Once it's ignited, 
It is life or death for our planet. And all the evidence proves death. Which means the only possible conclusion as to why would you wait is you are, in fact, members of a cult. The university is God. That's your religion. And that means you're not allowed to think for yourselves or question your leaders as they may only believe what they're told. You know, that's what a cult is. And so it is up to the media who perform as priests and the people line up just like all other religious cults simply to die. They assume going to heaven. That's what they all say. Every religion. In one form or another going to heaven. As in the gods of this university will take us to where we want to go. That's your religion. The university is your god taking you where you want to go. However, look where you're going. Look where you are. Look where you've been. People are a cult when they cannot think for themselves. Do you refuse? But then every religious group jeers and condemns the other group. We are better heard than they are because only we have the keys to, you know, heaven. Well, change is serious and hard. Belief is very, very easy because you can believe anything you want. Anything. So all the people say, give me what I want. But, they, you know, it is extremely few foolish and will end in death for us all. Alas, all the evidence proves that we either change and accept the price of that change or we go extinct. Because we have many threats. Very, very serious ones. And the media has not told you of any. But it is not a game this is truth and reality. What you want it or not won't change anything, which means the earth itself will die. Time is running out, literally. Every day they experiment, every day they mutilate, every day things get a little worse. Every day there's more mouths to feed. You have to make your decision now. You have to prove life's Life itself must come first for this planet, for us, for life everywhere. We can't get along without the other living things either. Or, alternately, every life on earth will be lost and just fall into hell, so to speak. That's what the truth is. Believe it or not, because the threats are so severe, so extreme, and so a life ending. There is no other choice to it. Overpopulation. We add a billion more people at least every 10 years and growing. We are not going to have food. We are not going to have water. We are not going to have peace. We are not going to even have a planet if they ignite an atomic fire. And that is how it is, even if your media doesn't tell you it is so. That's how it is. When you find out for sure, you will be dead. You have to think. I ask of you nothing more than investigate the reality of threats. Examine and determine what happens when this goes wrong. And let truth decide what is in the interest of life must come first for our planet. For the children especially, their future has been destroyed, as is yours for that matter. But what the last few generations have done is to uh, take our world and drive it right to the edge of extinction. If you don't believe that, you just haven't looked. This is particularly true with what the university, our leaders, have done. So you do need to understand, most of your governmental leaders simply want what they want, as do you. And they believe anything they are told by a university expert, as do you. It's called cult worship. The religious know it well. I ask you to become more than a religious cult. That's the foundation of this work. To identify what is true and accept every human reality and decision must put life 
for our planet first. And that will benefit us all and give us a life to live in our future, if you change. I ask you to consider the elements of truth that are displayed here and make your universities prove they are wrong. How is that not in your best interest? Our entire planet becomes the sun, 10 million degrees, burns our skin from 91 million miles away in the summer. If they are even the tiniest bit wrong, everything dies. It's not a game. This is the gamble. We get everything they want, or we all die. It's one or the other. Do you want to be wrong?